You need to stop making these mistakes right now because it's costing you money, it's wrecking other parts of your bike, and it's bad for the environment. Overoiling your chain will just pick up the dirt and turn into what can only be described as grinding paste. The temptation then is to follow the herd, spray some degreaser on it, wash it off with some water, and then overoil it again. Can you see where this is going? If you're doing this on the bike, the degreaser will be getting down into the hub area and the bottom bracket area and wrecking the bearings in there just while the bike's sitting around. You've just got to become the bike. G'day viewers, my name's Ashley Malcolm, and depending on your age, I have actually cleaned more bikes than you've had hot dinners. I'm about to show you how I clean drivetrains in the workshop by taking all the components off the bike and not using any degreasers. You'll want to follow closely because there are more pro tips than you can shake a stick at for pulling your bike apart and putting it back together that will save you time, money and frustration. And at the very end, I'm going to give you four of my best tips for making your drivetrain last longer. So buckle your toe straps, let's get into it right now. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get this into the two smallest cogs, the smallest one on the rear and the smallest one on the front. And then we're going to get our chain cleaner. We've got this Park Cyclone one here. We're just going to clip it onto the bottom of the chain. It's between the uh, rear derailleur and the cogs. Get some GD85. Now, the reason I'm using GD85 is because it's the best thing I've found to clean bikes with without damaging them. And we're just going to put some in and we're not going to overfill it. I'm not going to fill it right up to the line that's normally on the side of it. It tells you how much liquid to put in there because that's just way too much for what we want. So I'm just going to put some in there and then I'm just going to backpedal the chain through it. Now what I'm trying to do here is just get enough liquid on the outside of the chain but not actually get it so it's going into where all the rollers are. So we don't really want that much in there at all. And I'll show you afterwards how much I've actually used compared to what the line says. And it's such a waste of product. Whatever you're using in there, it's such a waste of product. You really don't need that much. So I guess I'm gonna do this maybe like 30 or 50 times, just until it looks all nice and wet on the outside, which it does now. And then I'm just gonna unclip the chain cleaner. And just put that to the side. And then I'm gonna get myself a rag and I'm gonna get it all folded up. I'm just gonna drag the chain through the rag. I'm gonna do it so I'm holding it at the top and the bottom. So I'm cleaning it basically horizontally. And once I've done that, I'm gonna fold the rag over again, and then I'm gonna hold it by the sides, and again, just back pedal it, and drag the chain through there, so it's just wiping off all the uh, GD85 that we put on there, and as much dirt as we can get off at the same time. And I'll just give this a little bit more of a wipe down, going backwards and forwards. Yeah, and that's got all of that off. Looking reasonably clean, actually. So I looked at how much uh, GT85 I put in this to get the chain wet enough for it to be cleaned. And I also did the same with um, some degreaser and they were both the same, it was 25 mils. Now the line on this chain cleaner, and I'm sure it's the same with other kind of manufacturers, it's just too much. So, so you're not wasting so much product and therefore you're not wasting so much money. Don't put as much in as it says on the line because the line is 60 mils on this one. That's more than twice as much. So save your money, save the product, and save the environment. So the next thing we're gonna do is get a chain breaker, a master link breaker. I'm just gonna pedal it backwards and get the master link down the bottom somewhere. Now the reason we're getting it down to the bottom is because we want to uh, just break it down there and then it won't just fly off the bike. Just grab our chain by the top and just pull it off the bike like that. Now the next thing you wanna do is uh, drop the back wheel out of it so then we can get the cassette off. And we'll just put that to the side for now and then we'll come back and get that in a bit and get the cassette off. And then the next thing you want to do is uh, clip the cable off the rear derailleur, clip the cable end off, undo the rear cable, we'll just do that enough so we can drag the inner out of the derailleur. And then we're just going to get the 5 mil Allen key, undo the derailleur, get this off, and then pull the bike back, and then I'm going to just get this cable disconnected. You do it by twisting it if you can't get it out. Now we're not taking the cable end off this cable because it doesn't need to come off to get the cable out of the derailleur. And so we can just keep it at the same length later on when we're uh, putting it back together. Just undo this front derailleur clamp. And next thing we want to do is um, get the cranks off. Again, I'm just going to tip the bike up to make it a bit easier for me, a bit more ergonomic. And the first thing I'm going to do is undo these clamping bolts. Then I'm going to get this uh, tension bolt tool, and just squeeze it in there and just undo it. Now if you can't undo it, you just get an Allen key in the back of an 8mm Allen key and get it off like that. Right, now there's a little tab on this type of uh, crank that needs to just be popped up. And just wiggle the crank off. I'm just going to get my mallet. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to whack this off with a mallet 
Don't use your hand because you'll hurt yourself. And don't use a hammer because you'll hurt the bike. So you just want some sort of soft mallet. And if you haven't got something like that, maybe put a piece of wood over it and then tap that with the hammer. Well, I've got the cranks off. It's just a good time to check the bottom bracket bearings and make sure they're okay. Because if they're not, you might as well change them now. Okay, let's just go and get this cassette off and then we're ready to get everything over to the cleaning area. My tools of choice to get these bits all cleaned up are some GD85, a rag, uh, two different size toothbrushes, and just a paintbrush that you'd get from the local hardware store. Our cleaning area, where we clean up all the parts in our workshop, is an old kitchen sink. But before anyone loses their chazzle, it's not drained into the water system. We drain it into a five gallon plastic tank, and then we dispose of it responsibly. Now this is probably a step too far for the occasional dry tray cleaning at home, but you could do this quite easily in a big plastic storage box. Please be mindful and dispose of any waste from cleaning your bike parts responsibly and be good to the environment. Okay, let's get the extractor fan on. The easiest and the quickest way to do this job is to do it as part of a process. And the first stage of that process is to spray all of the components with GT85. And this will make getting the muck off much easier. Now the main reason I use GT85 is because it gets the muck off really easy and brings everything up nice and shiny again. But it also means I don't have to re-lube the components when I put them back on the bike. This can of degreaser costs more than twice as much as this can of GT85. And you'll still have to wash it off with water and no matter how hard you try, you won't be able to get all the residue out and that will just break down any lube that you put on the chain afterwards. So now I'm gonna loosen up all the muck on the components by using my two toothbrushes and this paintbrush that I've got for getting into all the fiddly bits. I learned this process 30 years ago and we used to do it with a parts washer where we were using paraffin. Now it didn't take me very long to work out that the paraffin was actually wrecking the components. It would literally make the silver anodizing go dull in front of my eyes. But you know, the problem runs much further than superficial aesthetics. What you're actually doing by using heavy solvents, like degreasers, is you're washing out all the factory fitted grease from the pivots and all the moving parts of the components. And this just can't be replaced. Always remember that the more expensive your bike is, the shorter its functioning life will be if you treat it badly. And this includes over cleaning it. Now all the grime's loosened up, it's time to make these components nice and shiny again. As you can see, spraying GD85 on the components just washes all the muck off them and they come up nice and shiny. Okay, I'm just gonna give this chain a little bit more of a scrub with a toothbrush and some GD85 and then I'm gonna blast it off one more time. I'm now just gonna leave the components to drip dry for a while until most of the liquid's off them. GD85 has Teflon or PTFE in it. So not only will it clean your bike and leave a protective film on it to protect it from the elements, it'll make it cut through the wind faster. I'd just like to point out that I don't have any affiliation with GT85, nor am I getting paid for mentioning them in this video. I just love it. The last stage of this process is to get a nice clean dry rag and dry all the components with it, getting the excess GT85 off. You don't really need to get all the residue off, and if there's any residue left inside the gear mechanisms or around the back of the cassette cogs, that won't cause any harm at all. And it'll also, also just make the parts last a bit longer and re-lubricate them from the inside. Now these bits have all been cleaned and dried off, you can see how sparkly they've come up. Let's get this stuff back on the bike. Gonna start by getting a bit of grease into the gear hanger. Gonna have rear derailleur and just screw that in pretty firm and then I'll just wipe the grease off the back. Okay, now we've got the derailleur on, let's get the cable fitted. So I'm just gonna put that up a bit so we've got a better angle. Just grab our cable and slot the outer housing into the frame stop and slide it through the barrel adjuster. Just down underneath the pinch bolt. And then just drag it through and get the outer casing seated into the derailleur cable adjuster. Pull that nice and firm. Just nip it up. I fitted a new cable because the other one was too short to refit. So I'm just gonna poke that through there for now. And then later on, I'm gonna show you when I tidy this all up, what the advantage of doing that is. All right, so we're gonna just leave that as it is there, at that angle. We're gonna get our chain set. And we're just gonna get a bit of grease on the axle. I'll just put a few stripes on here and get a bit around where the spline is, where the left-hand crank goes on. This will just help it not corrode, but also what'll do any kind of excess will just slide up against the edge of the bottom bracket bearing and kind of help waterproof it, you know. 
Uh, it doesn't have to be too much, just a good amount. Get that in the bike. And then we get our left hand crank. And we'll just uh, pop that on. Get the tension cap or compression cap, whatever you want to call it. Basically just tightens the cranks onto the bottom bracket and firms it up so it doesn't have any play in it. With the Shimano ones, you just want to screw it in quite tight by hand. And that little tab there that we pushed up earlier pushes back down. And that's just locate onto the axle. There's a hole in the axle where that locates. And then we're just going to get the five mil key on the extension bar and just give that a bit of a tighten. Go across to the other one and just tighten that one in as well. And what you want to do is go back to the first one again, give it another little nip up, and the other side, again, just give that a nip up. It's about 12 to 15 newton meters, but I just do them up tight. Then we're going to get our front mate. Get our bolt back in. I've already put a little bit of grease on the thread of that. Let me just screw that up. And we want it about two mil above the highest teeth on the chain ring. Just check it straight. It just needs a little tweak. All right, so that's in line with the outer chain ring, the outer plate. Let's just nip that up. We can do any other finer adjustments when we're actually setting the gears up. Next thing to do is get this front gear cable connected. And there's a little cutout it has to go through underneath the pinch bolt washer. So I sometimes just lift it up with a little screwdriver and get it in there. So we've got that underneath there. We need to pull these ones pretty tight. Nip that up. Not fully, because we might need to adjust it later on. Okay, so let's uh, get the cassette back on the wheel and then we'll get the wheel in the bike and get the chain on. Now the way I like to do it is I just pass it through over the cassette and behind the seat stay and then I get it, the chain on the bottom sprocket and then I go up towards the front here where the chain set is and I just drop the chain in and hopefully we can just catch it on the uh, on the inner ring. I try and do it like that so I don't have to get my hand in down where the teeth of the chain ring are and maybe hurt myself. So I then just pop it underneath the uh, the front jockey wheel. Now make sure that you run it over the top of the tab, line the chain up with the jockey wheel and put it all the way through. Once done that, get our joining link, just pop it in each end of the chain and then just pull them together and join them up. You want to do this at the bottom because that means the chain won't just fall off. Now don't try and pull it back and, and lock it together down the bottom because if you slip, you will hit your hand on the chain ring and it will hurt. So what I do is I just spin the wheel back until we end up with the Joining link at the top, there we are. Now just make sure it's still together properly. And I just hold the back wheel and I push the crank down and it just clicks straight in, nice and safe. Right, this is ready to set up. So let's get that done. Okay, that's all set up and ready to give back to the customer. Now, some of you might be wondering when I'm gonna put some lube on it. I'm not gonna put any lube on it. I just cleaned it with lube. So you would have seen earlier that I had tucked the rear gear cable up through the parallelogram of the rear derailleur. The reason I've done that is because you can leave the cable longer than you can, the prescribed amount that Shimano say that you should do. And the reason they say to cut it off at three centimeters is so that it doesn't go into the wheel or into the chain. But by tucking it up through one of the holes in the parallelogram, you can actually leave six centimeters of cable there. Well, five and a half is what I've left on this one. And that basically means that you can um, cut the cable off more times, saving you time and money in the future whenever you need to take the cable out for servicing or cleaning your bike. This is a really neat way to tuck the cable away as well, so you can't actually see it. If you feel like you're getting benefit from this video, please share it with someone else who you think would benefit. Okay guys, thanks for getting this far. And here's some of my top tips for making your drivetrain last longer. When you have a new chain fitted to your bike, it's got the factory grease on it to protect it. Now most people just want to degrease the chain or oil the chain and get it dirty so they have to degrease it. But what you should really do to keep your bike tidier, cleaner and make the whole drivetrain last longer is not do that. You want to wait till it squeaks, maybe give it a little wipe off with some lubricant but only a very tiny amount on a rag. Just drag the chain through it and if it does squeak it's usually not the chain, it's usually the jockey wheels. So that'd be the first thing I lubricated. Now when I cleaned the drivetrain on this bike I didn't do this part because the jockey wheels weren't that dirty. But I get bikes in here that when I'm pedaling them, when I put them in the stand, honestly, they feel five or 10 or even 15% more resistant than they otherwise should do. And a lot of the time, it's just because people have let their jockey wheels get mucked up. So what you wanna do if they are mucked up, and this just makes the cleaning process easier as well, is just get yourself a plain headed screwdriver, a good size one, and then just put it in the jockey wheel and then pedal the bike backwards. You just hold the screwdriver up against the jockey wheel 
and you do it in different places on the front and the rear of both of them and they'll just scrape the muck straight off. So a good tip to make your dry chain last longer is not use it in the big big because that's when the chain is under the most tension and the bike really doesn't like it. It stresses the derailleurs out, it wears the chain out, it wears the cogs out you know, because of the angles and how taut the chain is. Now the chain's quite happy when you're in the big chain wheel and you're somewhere down you know, in the middle of the cassette and you can see because it's yeah, quite easy to push the actual jockey cage. But as soon as you get up to the top, the chain's all stretched out, the jockey cage hardly moves at all, it's really tight, and the chain takes nearly a straight line through there, which really isn't good. And you know, it's okay if you're just going over the top of a hill and you're just doing it for a minute, but if you're riding your round in the big, big all the time, you've got to ask yourself, have I got the right ratios on my bike? Why aren't I putting a bigger cog on the front or a smaller cog as my top gear on the rear? You know, you should be using the big chain wheel, the small chain wheel, and all of your cassette. And also if you run bigger cogs, it rolls better, so it feels better when you're riding it. But also because there's more teeth, it'll last longer. The next bit of advice I can give you, and this is really important, is get yourself a chain checker. Now, you may have seen this in one of my other videos, but it's worth mentioning again because it's so important. If you change your chain, before it's really, really worn out and started wearing the cogs and the chain rings out, then you won't have to replace those parts. The chain is the strongest and the cheapest part of the dry train. So you might as well change that out before it wears out and wears out the expensive bits. If you haven't got a chain checker, get one of these. Uh, there's different brands, this is a roll off one, but you want the ones that measure from one point to another and not the dial ones because these are more accurate and just give a definitive uh, measurement to whether the chain's worn out or really worn out and had it. And the way you use that is just by popping it into the chain. And I do it when it's in the two biggest cogs or two of the biggest cogs, because that's when the chain's at its most taut and when all the rollers pull apart from each other and show what the gap is between them from where they're actually worn out. So you just pop this in the chain. Uh, I'm gonna go for the point one side, which is the longer side. And that one goes in on this chain. So this chain has definitely had it and should have been changed ages ago. And if you have a good look at the teeth here, you'll see that they're starting to wear out as well. So this needs a new chain ring, new chain, new cassette. And this could have been avoided by checking it before it was actually worn out and swapping it out for a new chain. Okay, I'm off to give my hair its daily wash with this high quality degreaser. And then I'm gonna put this slab of butter into it to revitalize it. And then it'll be all ready for me to do it again tomorrow. If you haven't already liked and subscribed, please do that now.